Oh boy, today we have a beauty. We have the newly released Sony ZV-1F ZV-1F against the Sony ZV-1 ZV-1, which is not so newly released. And this is actually a lot more complicated than you might think. Well, it was more complicated than I thought, but I am a simple man after all. And here's the thing, maybe neither of these cameras is good for you. Maybe both of them or one of them. I don't know. We're gonna find out during this video. Let's talk about it. Now, I actually really love both of these cameras. They're so small and lightweight and easy to use. And the ZV-1F, uh, that got a lot of hate when it first came out. But do you know what else got a lot of hate when it first came out? The ZV-E10 that you're looking at right now. And now, everybody's buying it. People love the ZV-E10, and so they should. It is one of my favorite cameras of all time. So what I'm saying is, don't hate this camera before you try it. People hear specs and then they watch reviews, you know, from fools like me, and uh, then they decide that they hate this camera. And maybe the camera is not for you. Don't don't get me wrong. You you don't have to buy it. But I'm saying don't just go hating on it without actually trying it out. And I think you will see in this video this is quite a capable camera. For video work anyway, for photo work, absolutely not. But for video work, it does a great job. It is being billed as a vlogging camera. That's what Sony likes to call everything these days, vlogging cameras. I like to call them content creation cameras because I like to create the content. And, uh, but you know, I am gonna do a vlogging test. So let's take these two out side by side and uh, show you some vlogging. Now let's start with how I would actually use the cameras. We have the ZV-1F over here and the ZV-1 over here. As you can see, it's a much bigger crop on the ZV-1, which is why people were complaining that the lens wasn't quite wide enough. Now, if you're wondering why the footage is so smooth, I have run it through Catalyst Browse. I probably have it written on the screen. Anyway, I've run it through Catalyst Browse so you get that gimbal-like footage. That's a loud car without an actual gimbal. And it does take longer and it's an extra step and some people don't like it. I use it all the time. I think it's absolutely fantastic. That was a neighbor of mine. So uh, now, Let's switch it over to the active stabilization and see if the ZV-1F can compete with the ZV-1 because I think the ZV-1's stabilization is better from what I have seen in the tests online, but now I'm doing my own tests, so let's find out. And so now this is with the active steady shot on the ZV-1F. I saw a lot of micro jitters in all of the tests that I saw online, and this is the ZV-1, and the ZV-1, the stabilization's always been pretty good. The problem is, as you can see, is that crop. So if you are gonna use the ZV-1, I would say you get a selfie stick and you extend it out a bit further. Looks a bit odd when you're walking down the street, holding it out from afar on. So, but you know what? It looks odd doing this anyway. Right now I have two cameras on one little selfie stick. So that looks super odd. Anyway, this is how it looks with the active stabilization. Which one do you think did better? Hey, let's go with the all automatic modes and see how the cameras fare because I've been doing my own little color grading here to make it look as cinematic as possible. Now this right here is the all auto modes. Intelligent auto on the ZV-1F with the uh, active stabilization. Intelligent auto on the ZV-1 with active stabilization. So uh, how does this look? They both look pretty similar in the screen. The ZV-1F seems to have a little bit better colors and I'm not going to do any color grading so I'll show you straight out of camera what it looks like. The ZV-1F is quite a bit wider of course but it also looks a bit punchier. Uh, the color's more true to life at least in the little LCD screen. And uh, while we're at it let's do a microphone test. I have the little wind muffs up on top there, the little you know Don King looking wigs. Uh, this is a test of the ZV-1F's microphone coming straight in. It's pretty windy out here too. And now this is a test of the ZV-1's microphone. It's uh, like I said, can you hear that siren that won't stop blaring? Why does everything always happen to me? Am I right? Some emergency down there interfering with my vlog life. So I thought the image looked absolutely fantastic from both of these cameras, especially when you do your own color grading. And what I did for my own color grading is not really mine. I just used the Cine2 profile and I used the Paul Leeming corrective lot and then I just added a little bit of contrast and saturation. And that is it. The auto modes looked pretty good. I thought the ZV-1F's auto mode looked a little bit better than the ZV-1, but uh, and obviously the ZV-1 F was a lot wider, which made it a more comfortable vlogging experience. However, 
because of that tighter focal length, that uh, 24 millimeters and the 1.8 as opposed to the F2, you got a better background separation with the ZV-1. So it had that blurrier background, which I am a sucker for, as you might have noticed during the course of my YouTube career. But with the ZV-1, you can just grab a little tripod here that has an extender portion, keep it away from your body. There you go, that solves the tightness issue right there. The tightness issue, that sounded weird. But when it comes to using it on, say, a gimbal, say you don't want to use the stabilization, you want to use a tiny little gimbal like the Zhiyun Crane M2S, which is one of my favorite gimbals and perfect for these two cameras, the uh, ZV-1F is better because you don't have that extendability on this guy. You're just going to hold the gimbal out in front of you, so you'll want that wider lens. So when it comes to gimbals, I think the ZV-1F is the way to go. And a quick note about autofocus, even though the ZV-1F uses contrast-based autofocus, I must say that it is working fine. I thought that was a really curious move by Sony and I did not like it and I still don't like it. I wish it had the phase detect the regular Sony autofocus, which is amazing. But I have to admit, that it has not lost me once uh, in the weeks that I've had it, not in the studio, not out vlogging. It, ne it just latches onto my eye and it never lets go. The only time you will notice the autofocus not working perfectly is if you are using the um, product showcase mode. At least that is what I have noticed. The product showcase mode in the ZV-1F, it uh, gives you just this little square in the center. You have to put your product right in that square and sometimes it takes a while to latch on and then when you take the product down, it might take a while to latch back on to your face. So uh, I wouldn't buy the ZV-1F if you want to do a lot of product showcase mode. Now I have to say the ZV-1 its product showcase mode is not perfect either. You don't have to put it directly in the center, but it still doesn't work 100% of the time. This ZV-E10 here, its product showcase mode works fantastically. It just, it works every time. Whereas the ZV-1, not the greatest, but still better than the ZV-1F. But now that I've talked about the studio a little bit, let's do a studio test. And I can also show you some close-ups for sharpness to see uh, if one camera is sharper than the other. So to my eye, the ZV-1F was a hair sharper, but I have to say that I am impressed with both of those cameras for the studio. I didn't expect them to work well here in handsome studios, but they do. They work quite well. You make sure you have some lights in the background. If your background is dark, you're going to see a lot of noise. These are small sensors, one inch sensors. So when you have dark backgrounds, you're going to see a bunch of that noise dancing around. But speaking of the noise, you notice in the close-ups, again, the ZV-1F, I think, did a better job. This is just uh, updating the software, making it optimized for the camera and the sensor. And I think that uh, Sony did a good job. So this camera looks a little bit sharper and it does better at noise reduction. So let's do a low light test. Everybody loves a low light test. I'll pit the two against each other in the backyard. I'll also throw in the iPhone 13 Pro just so that you have a barometer, something to measure against because the iPhone 13 Pro is pretty good for a phone in low light, but it's still a phone with a very small sensor. So uh, you can judge it by that. So the two ZV cameras definitely did better than the iPhone, obviously, and I thought the ZV-1F, even though it's an F2 compared to the ZV-1's F1.8, 
Again, I thought the ZV-1F came out on top just by a little bit, but it does seem like it handles low light situations better than the ZV-1. So now I'm gonna talk about the advantages that each have over the other, and then I will give you my conclusions. Now, obviously they all have flip out screens. They all, the two cameras have the flip out screens, uh, but the uh, ZV-1F has that new menu that is touch screen and it is so good. It is so easy to use. Everything is laid out well. Sony did a good job with the new menus and you can just manipulate your settings by touching the screen when you're standing in front, much easier to use and navigate than the ZV-1, which uh, only has things like touch to focus. You can't actually touch the menu when you are going through it. So I much prefer the ZV-1 for that, ZV-1F, sorry, for that. And the ZV-1F also has nice tally lights. It has a tally lamp to tell you you're recording and you get a big red ring around here when you are recording as well. So those things are helpful when it comes to recording video. What's also helpful is where the quarter inch thread is here. You see it right there? So when you go to change the battery or the SD card, then uh, not a problem at all right there. You can just attach a base plate. That's what I like to do, attach a quick release base plate. I have these F38s from Ulanzi, fantastic. My whole system, my uh, tripod I'm looking at right now, my selfie stick, my vlogging stick, all of it, use the quick release plates. So I put them on my cameras and I don't take them off, but you have to take them off if you're using the ZV-1. It just, they get in the way, no matter, look, even this tiny little base plate gets in the way of the uh, ZV-1 opening the door. You just can't do it with anything. So every time you wanna change the battery or the SD card, you have to take the base plate off. Super annoying on the ZV-1, that is. It has less moving parts. I don't like it when the lenses, the power lenses protrude and come out. And sometimes when the ZV-1's in my pocket, I'll press it by accident and the lens tries to shoot out. Here, I just stick this in my pocket. Now, I did get a little Sony cap, a 40.5 millimeter thread cap, so I can just put it on there and that way I'm protecting my lens because with the ZV-1, when it's retracted there, you see the lens is protected, whereas this guy, it's not unless you get yourself one of these little caps. So uh, I liked to liked. I like to do that. Now the biggest advantage the ZV-1F has over the ZV-1 is overheating. This guy, uh, the ZV-1F, I haven't had it overheat yet. I ran it to do a battery test. It recorded for 90 minutes of 4K and no overheat warning light came on at all. I was doing the same test with the ZV-1 and it just, I couldn't get through it. It overheated after about 20 minutes. It just, it couldn't cool down enough. It never, ever went to its full battery when I'm using it in 4K. So if you wanna use this in the studio for longer sessions, you want to use it for streaming, you want it as your top-down angle, a B angle, even your A angle, then in the studio, I think that the ZV-1F is the way to go. The ZV-1, very limited in the fact that it overheats in 4K in moderate temperatures. Mine is 77 degrees when this was overheating on me all the time. It has updated color signs, so I think its auto modes look a little bit better. Of course, it has that wider lens, which is better for close-up work and vlogging. Speaking of that, gimbal work, especially when you're facing yourself with small little gimbals, it is better for that as well. And once again, it is better at uh, noise reduction and it's a little bit sharper. It's a fair amount of benefits for the little ZV-1F, but what about the ZV-1? Well, there are some major benefits to the ZV-1. The first one is photos. This thing can take raw photos, whereas the ZV-1F, it just takes JPEG. I don't know why they did that. It's terrible, like I mean, and, and you have a zoom range here. 24 to 70 is what it is in full frame terms. So if you wanna go out and about, you, you want a video camera and a travel photography camera, this one, has you covered so much more. You know, just having that zoom range and the ability to shoot raw photos makes this an excellent travel camera, whereas the ZV-1F, it is simply a travel vlogging camera or other content creation. This has internal NDs, so if you're on a nice bright sunny day, you can just turn on the internal NDs and you are good to go. Major benefit there. Now, I did get a uh, variable ND filter for the ZV-1F, so for me, it's not much of an issue. I have variable ND filters for all of my cameras, So, uh, but it's still, to have it internally here, fantastic. And like I said, the lens is protected when it's retracted. It is covered up here, so you could just stick it in your pocket, and as long as you don't accidentally turn it on, you are fine. 
and the autofocus. Since this uses face detect autofocus, it is going to be a more reliable autofocus. I have been impressed with the ZV-1F, but there is no denying that having face detect autofocus is a benefit for the ZV-1, especially if you want to do that product showcase mode. So now that I'm at the conclusions, you see how this is tricky. If you want a small little travel video camera, you would figure that the ZV-1F would be the way to go when it comes to vlogging because it has that wide angle lens. But I like the bokeh and the background separation with the ZV-1 and I think its stability is quite good. So I would just use a selfie stick and that extend that out a little bit further. But then if you wanted to then switch your camera into the studio, I think the ZV-1F is the way you have to go because it doesn't overheat anywhere near as easily. I haven't gotten it to overheat at all, but whereas the ZV-1 definitely overheats. So in the studio, I would go with this guy every time. You wanna take photos, ZV-1. You wanna do vlogs with gimbals, ZV-1F. ZV-1F has easy access to the card and the battery, whereas this guy, not so much. It's just, it's complicated. So I will tell you for me, I did buy the ZV-1F and my plan is to use it as a top-down angle or maybe a third angle somewhere. And I am fine with that, especially with the top-down angle. I'll probably put it in manual focus anyway. And I had I like having this tiny little vlog camera if I want it. That's a, it's a benefit for me. And I really enjoy the ergonomics and the menus. And uh, I really, really like this camera. And since I have bigger cameras, I generally go out with my full frame cameras to take photos. Even if I go on vacation, I lug it around. I, I, I just, I hurt my back to get the big full frame lenses and those photos. So I wouldn't be using a point and shoot generally for photography. So this is just me speaking as to what I would do and what I am doing. And that is I'm hanging on to the ZV-1F, but I absolutely understand if you would rather go for the ZV-1 or if you already have it, why you would not wanna swap it out for this. I, I get it. And I will tell anybody who's looking at both of these cameras, don't forget about the ZV-E10 because this is an interchangeable lens camera and the sky is the limit with the quality that you can get out of this camera for both photos and video. And uh, it's only $6.99. You are going to have to buy lenses for it, but like this Sigma 60 mil F1.4 is about 350 bucks. You're talking about $1,050, which of course is a lot more than $500 but the quality that you're going to get out of something like that, fantastic. Of course, not as travel friendly, you know, always. It's all complicated, isn't it? So if you choose either of these cameras, I am sure that you can make it work in your workflow. You just have to know what you're getting. And don't be one of those people who hates a camera without actually trying it. Just, you know, if you watch a couple of reviews and you've decided you hate it, and look, it might not be for you. That's fair. Lots of cameras aren't for me, although I can't name any off the top of my head. I love cameras so much, but uh, you know, give it a whirl, try it out before you just blast it because you may find that in fact the camera will surprise you. This certainly surprised me and I'm surprised that you're still here watching this. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.